Welcome back. It's to Plus Politics, and we are looking at another at, at area now. The atmosphere in Nigeria seems to be rising as attacks, arson, pandemonium, and more have been reportedly occurring in various parts of the country. In response to these, the government of Edo and Lagos states have declared a 24-hour curfew. And in order to curb and potentially end the spate of violence triggered by thugs across the nation, Inspector General of Police uh, Mohamed Adamu has ordered immediate deployment of anti-riot officers throughout the country. Still with us to discuss this is Professor Chris Mwokobia, uh, who is a lawyer. And also joining us is another security expert, Onye Kachi Adekoya. Good evening, gentlemen, once again. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I, I hope we have Professor Chris back. Okay, I, I will come back to you. I, I let's also inform our viewers that uh, the Lagos State Government has reviewed the 4 p.m. curfew to 9 p.m. This is fresh, and that's to let people you know, get to their various home based on the time that information was released. So kudos to the Lagos State Governor, I must say, for reviewing that because there was a cry about how will people get home, especially those who drive for three, four, five hours before they get to their houses. So good one. So our viewers, please be informed and tell your friends, tell your loved ones that the time has further been reviewed to 9 p.m. So, Oyekachi, let's look at um, the dimension this issue has taken. Um, what do you think is the best thing that government ought to do as, at this time? Well, thank you for the question. It's quite difficult to advise um, government, particularly when you have a novel situation that we have on our hands. Right? Um, we would only advise and appeal to government to respect the fundamental human rights of every citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, um, exercise restraint as much as they can, because we don't want an already bad situation to get worse. Uh, because what government needs to do now is to seek to manage the narrative and ensure that the narrative doesn't get out of hand. Because we don't want a spillover of crisis or any, any circumstance that further drives us even closer to a cliff edge. Okay, um, because a um, lo lot of people were looking at um, um, whether you could describe this as uh, carrot and stick. You remember how government, you know, we even had the Lagos State Governor, you know, going to the protest ground, speaking to the people. Even when he was jailed, he stood by them to explain some of the steps taken by the government. Uh, do you agree that the protesters should take a back seat and allow government work on what they promised? Well, again, um, fair point, so fair question. I've always a firm believer that at the end of every crisis or every, at the end of every war is dialogue. So both parties have to give dialogue a chance. I know that uh, people want to be seen to be sounding politically correct or protests correct. Uh, but Nigeria belongs to all of us. And we should be open to having fair and firm discussions with ourselves. So absolutely. Um, I think at this point, uh, dialogue is the way to go. We've always advocated for doubt dialogue. Now, there are some people who are claiming that perhaps this violence we see uh, has been orchestrated by some elements within the government or some elements that are uh, sympathetic to the cause of government and therefore the violence has given the protest a bit of a coloration. Uh, well, we shouldn't look at the pros or the cons of any side. What we have to look at at this time is Nigeria and ensuring that we don't have a Syria-style case or Tunisia-style or Egypt-style case on our hands. And, you know, and I don't seek to be an alarmist. I'm just trying to be a realist. That at some point in time, we have to sit down to talk. So if we will sit down to talk tomorrow 
or one year down the line, what's stopping us from talking even at this time? So parties have to come to the table in a fair, frank, honest manner, and let's discuss the issues. Importantly, agree to next steps and chart a way forward for, for the country. Okay. I understand that Professor is now on the line. Prof, um, sorry for that uh, sh long break, but what do you have to Hello? say about the way forward? Now that uh, it has taken the dimension it has taken, whether government is to be blamed or not, what is the way out? Because this protest has an, uh, it has an aim. How can we achieve that aim? Sorry, is that question to me? No, it's for Professor okay. Chris Mokobia. Okay, good. Currently, I'm an, I'm an ambassador for peace. That's true. And I believe in the cause of peace. I align with one of the uh, very apt statements of uh, my co discussant who said that no matter how tenuous a situation is, it has to end at uh, the seat and the table of dialogue. But you know what, Coyote? When I was confronted with questions regarding this protest Thursday and Friday, I did say that the time had come for the IG to request to meet with the leaders of this protest across the country. Even if it is five five from each of the locations, the, the protesters will be able to identify their leaders at different locations, and then sit down with these young men and these young ladies and discuss passionately what reforms he was looking at or he is looking at. And then they will return back to the protesters wherever they are and pass the message. It will filter down. But rather than see the protesters are partners in progress. What those who support and side with government almost always do in this country is to give government the impression that those who disagree with them are enemies. That those who disagree with the policies of government are villains. That those who disagree with the policies of government are haters. But that is not true. And the time has come for us as a people to put country first. And the way to go is to, the president has to talk with this country. He has to reassure Nigerians that government does not have a hand in this crisis and conflict. Because for 10, 11 days, the, our young people out there have conducted the protest peacefully. Why did violence suddenly erupt after the leadership of the National Assembly had met with the president in the villa? Like I said, the witch cried last night. And the child dies this morning. Kyle, you can make your reasonable conjectures. <laughs> but I believe that the time has come for government to engage the leadership of the civil society for government to engage the leadership of the ANSAS protests, the time has come for the police to understand that the man who pays you, whether prof, prof, directly or indirectly, prof, maybe there's something you know, maybe there's you something you... You do not turn the guns against the people that you were meant to protect. Prof, can I, can I quickly interject? Can you tell me how the leadership can be identified. I remind you some of the things that have happened. We had one of the popular artists who tried to champion this. We had a PRO of the police force, had a conversation with him, and he retreated. We had David O, who had a conversation with the IGP and was being called names. How do we identify the leadership to engage this information? Coyote, Coyote let me tell you very Please easy. do. Very easily, you go across the, the, the theaters of protests, you see leadership. We, we, we were in school in the days of the anti sap protests. We were part of those who fought against the apartheid 
regime. At different levels, you have leaders. Even if, if you were to, to have visited the Lekki Center, you would see leaders. If you, if you were to have been to the Alausa Aziz, you would see their leaders. If you have come to Abuja, you will see leaders. That they did not put up one person as a grand leader of the protest does not mean anybody who's telling you that it would have been impossible to identify the leaders of this protest is not fair. It's not being sincere. It's not being true. And so as I talk to you, Kayade, if our leaders are sincere in wanting to have a truly peaceful country, all we have to do is meet at the table of dialogue and look at the fundamental issues that these, these young men and young women have raised. Okay. When they're talking about police reform, when they're talking about answers, it, 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 it is a decoy to a call for a holistic reform of, of how the security architecture works in this country and functions. It is a call for true fiscal strategy. It is a call for the rework of the Nigerian enterprise. It is not a call for the removal of this president. It is not a call for the transition of this government. It is not a call for anarchy. So those who have misinformed government, those who are dealing and merchandising with violence and poverty for selfish ends are not doing government any good. I'm okay. not doing Nigeria any good, and I'm not doing the people any good. Prof. I think that the time has come for us all to come. Prof, I, I, can, I can guess where you are headed, but I'm going to give you room to talk about it. Your advocacy is something that I'm aware of, and that has to do with restructuring. I, I'll come back to that. But let me go back to Yekachi Adekoya. I'm still talking about solution. There is an immediate step that has been taken Curfews have been declared in different states. Police has deployed anti-riot officers across the country. How do we ensure that this protest is not lost in us? The aim of this protest is not lost in us. Because as far as government is concerned, their demands are legitimate. As far as many political leaders are concerned, their demands are legitimate. How are we, how are we sure that these are not just political statements? I think, uh, the, so I, I think that what is important to us is not the protest. The protest is a means to an end. Very true. The 5.7 points, 14 points agenda, which the protesters have listed, I, I think are the things we need to focus on. So how do we move this needle to the point where we need it to be? I think that's a question. So if we look at the way this protest started, the initiative was with the protesters. And we placed a lot of onus on them to maintain peace, decorum, and continue the agitation with as minimum disruption to public life as possible. We can say to some extent that they tried to hold up their part of the bargain until the violence started. Now, the initiative is moving back to the government with the imposition of curfew, perhaps to a greater good, because we've seen a number of um, police stations overrun, um, a, lot of, a number of policemen who have lost their lives, we are almost getting to a situation where we are almost pitched against the police. And what some people are beginning to see in, in some parts of the country is that response from police has become slow. In the, in the case of an emergency, the police are not willing to come out because they are, they are themselves under some level of threat and exposure within the, within the society. So what we need to do is to place back the onus on government and on leadership. Government has to show goodwill to say, despite the curfew, despite the deployment of soldiers, DSS, NSCs, and police, we are still willing to continue with talks and to ensure the reforms which they have assured the people. And finally, what I'm, what I'm hoping to see is, I want to see the military stand with the protesters. 
I want to see the policemen stand with them, to reason with them. Mm. They can take a cue from the National Guard of the United States of America, particularly when they deployed to quell some riots. The National Guard stood with the people, danced with the people, empathized with them, showed some mm. connection and understanding, mm. and that way they won over some of the protesters. Mm. So I think there's a lot we can do. Mm. We need to see more goodwill, would be my point from the government. Mm. And with that goodwill, they can win over some of the protesters. Wow. That's, that's, that looks like an El Dorado, and I wish we have that very soon. Uh, finally, Prof, uh, I want to, you to make a submission, and that is stemmed out from what I see some people are trying to jump into to look for an opportunity to push some of the things they've been talking about. I've seen people talked about, let's slash the, the alliances of National Assembly members, let's do this, let's do that. How do we ensure that this thing can be, you know, added or we should just stay with the five demands for now? Let me say clearly that I believe that the time has gone first for engagement between government leadership and the leadership of the protests, as well as, if you like, the civil society and interested uh, uh, security experts. The reasons are profound. Because whether we like it or not, we want a country that works. And that was the essence of the protest. Now, I think that fundamentally, what the National Assembly must begin to do is to look at how we can work as part of the political work of the Indian Constitution. For me, I am really that all we need is a restructured Nigeria. Students and trust will be built. Because, because the truth is, uh, Kyle, that we have a constitution that is manifestly false, fraudulent, and it's a lie. Our constitution says that we, the people, are having agreed to make this law, this constitution for ourselves. And that's not true. We never met. I mean, we, what we're saying is that all these protests across this country, you have the Arawas complaining, you have the Odua complaining, you have Bindibo and IPOB, you have several complaints and, and agitations across our country. We resort to meet at the table of dialogue. We work and reform this country such that every citizen of this country we we'll see it as an answer, as a stakeholder, such so that justice, equity, and fairness will be etched on our collective canvas. That's point number two. Point number three, currently, is that the government must reassure the Nigerian people that the conflict and the crisis that has messed up an otherwise peaceful protest championed by the Nigerian youth is not their direct making. I will not sit down here okay, prof. to tell you that government and government stakeholders do not know what happened. Anybody who's saying that is being true, true by heart, anybody who's absorbing state agents from what has happened between yesterday and today is being true to his or her faith. Okay, I think prof. that the time has come for us to advocate dialogue and peaceful and proactive engagement. Okay. The parties involved, but I believe I have it. I, I'm so sorry that um, your advocacy never stops, and you can continue that. And uh, we will expect, we can see a lot of people joining us on our, our live streaming on this conversation. You can continue that conversation by dropping your comment, and you never can tell how far it can go. Thank you once again, Professor Chris Wokovia, a legal practitioner, and also many thanks to. Onyekachi Adekoya, for your time, for your intervention. We quite appreciate them. And to our viewers, uh, we'll take a short break, very quick breather, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Please don't go anywhere. Here's my take. While it is not strange that the purported hijack or the violent nature of the protest 
the essence and the core of the unprecedented demonstration by the faceless Nigerian youth should not be lost in us, which is a reform of the police institution. Yes, it is true, the protest may have gone beyond answers. As a matter of fact, it has gone beyond answers. It is a call to end of impunity, unaccountable governance, wasting governance, and many other government excesses. For record, this process is not and should not be about regime change or call for the sack of the IG. It is about institutional reform, whether there are hijackers, hoodlums, street archings, public nuisance, and even attack on security operatives and even killing of protesters. The message hopefully will stand the test of time and situations. The voices of the youths have been heard, and that remains whether it will be heeded too. My advice is that the current administration should write its name in gold by implementing these reforms and demands holistically so that we do not have to come back to this same issue in days, months, or years to come. And that is my take. Plus Politics returns tomorrow. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeinde, saying bye for now.